Hello, baseball fans and sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. If you recall, I was doing a 1980 Pirate season and out of the park baseball. And I'm going to make it a career, so I'm going to go from 1980 to 1981, etc. That's the plan. So, uh, I put up some games on the website, on the on my YouTube channel, and you may or may not have seen some or all of those. But that was in 1980, and when I put those games up, the Pirates were struggling to be a 500 team. But look what happened. We go to standings. And you can see, let me put myself up here. You can see that we finished one game out in the National League with a 94 and 68 record. Now remember, when I was putting up these earlier games, they were like, I don't know, June games maybe? The latest one was a June game. And we were, I mean, like under 500. So we came on like wildfire. So let me uh, show you the, so these are the final standings. The Montreal Expos ended up winning the East and they ended up winning it all too. They went to the World Series against, let's look at that. Um, they went to the World Series against Kansas City and they won four games to one. And the, uh, you can't quite see it down there at the bottom, but the MVP of the World Series was Warren Cromarty of the Expos. But let's get back to the Pirates. So let's go to the front office and uh, let's go to, well, let's see, home, yeah. Here you've got some of our, uh, you know, some of our team leaders. And really what happened, I think what really happened was the trading in this game is insane, at least for the 80s. And I, and, and like I've, t I've told you in past videos, I'm the manager of the Pirates. I'm not the GM. They're, the computer is the GM. I just take what the GM gives me and I do my best to manage the team throughout the season. And sometimes I do quick plays to get through the season quicker. But um, let's see. Yeah, reports and info, team statistics. So here's our team statistics. This is the overall, this is the batting, and this is the pitching over here. Overall record 94 and 68. Pythagorean record was 97 and 65. So even, I mean, I guess those early, the way we were performing early on may have cost us because the Pythagorean record says we should have won 97, not 94. And then we would have won the East. So uh, one run games, we were 29 and 22. Extra inning games, we were eight and five. And we were very good on the road, 46 and 35 and 48 and 33 at home. Um, last 10 games, we finished out the season six and four. I guess you really can't complain about that. But here's where the rubber hits the road. In April, we were nine and eight. In May, we were 13 and 14. In June, we were 12 and 17. These were a lot of the games that I was put, putting up. In July, we were 13 and 15, but then BAM! Yeah. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. 
See this? This is my birthday. In August, we were 26 and 5. And in September, we were 19 and 8. So that's where the difference was. And I think the difference was reflected mainly in the fact that there was a lot of trading going on. Other teams were making trades, as well as our GM, for me, was making trades. And we were getting all kinds of different players on the Pirates. And you'll see that as we go into the 1981 season. It will be a Pittsburgh Pirates that you will not recognize. It will not be anything close to what the 1981 Pittsburgh Pirates were. So our, you know, but look at, I mean, look at where we were in a lot of these categories. Batting average second, on base percentage second, slugging percentage second, on base percentage second, war third, uh, run scored third, hits second. I mean, there's only a few categories where we're, we weren't that good. Home runs, we definitely were not that good. Um, we were sixth in the NL in home runs. And we were seventh in the NL in stolen bases. And, but base running, we were fourth. And then over here, earned run average, we were fourth. Starters ERA, fourth. Bullpen ERA, we had a problem in the bullpen. We were seventh. Runs allowed, fourth. Hits allowed, third. Opponents batting average, third. BABIP, my favorite stat, BABIP, we were fourth. Home runs allowed, we were fourth. Uh, walks, fourth. So, and deficient, the defensive efficiency, that was also a bit of a problem for us, although we were still third in the NL in it. So, um, I guess when you're actually playing it, it seems like it's worse than what it really is overall. So, we go back to the standings. So, yeah, the uh, Royals beat the Yankees, ended up beating the Yankees in the ALCS. Because remember, this is back in 80, 80, 81. So it was really just each division winner went right to the league championship series and played a best of seven series. And then, or best of five, was it best of five? And then they went to the World Series and played a best of seven. So... And we just barely missed out on that. One game behind the Expos. One game behind the Expos. So we're going to have to hope that as we move forward, these trades are something that, you know, is going to help us out. So now here's a preview. Some of these trades, also some of these players were acquired already in the off season after the season was over after the 80 season was over but let's look at the um let's look at the pitching staff so you can see our it shows right here that our starting rotation for 81 will be don robinson jim bibby phil Negro, glenn abbott and mickey mailer now glenn abbott and mickey mailer are going to be a problem i think because they're not that good <laughs> And then in the bullpen, you've got people like Dave LaRoche, Jim Beatty, Odell Jones. I might actually move Beatty to the starting rotation. Odell Jones, Dave Heverlo, Ken Kravak. I might even move Ken Kravak to the starting rotation. Dave Lemanchek, Bill Lee, Bill Spaceman Lee, and Jerry Uger, who I don't even remember. Now, if we go to lineups, your general lineup here is Willie Wilson. We got Willie Wilson from Kansas City. Awesome. My GM, he pulled off some great deals, but he also gave away the farm. We have a terrible farm system. I'll show you that in a second. Lee Lacey, Richie Hebner, Ken Phelps, Craig Kasich. Now, Craig Kasich was with the team last year, but he was a bench player. This hasn't projected to be the starting center fielder. If that ends up being right, we're in trouble. I might actually move Wilson to center fielder, to center field, and see if there isn't somebody else we can put in in left, like Jim Wolford, for instance. We have Jim Wolford. We have Larry Milborn. Look at these guys. They're not pirates. Never were. But <laughs> Jose Rodriguez. And then we've got Rick Dempsey at catcher. Rick Dempsey. 
and Tim Foley. So, and well, of course, Tim Foley and Garner, they were pirates. And so you would expect to see them. But like, as far as pirates in this lineup, you only got Lacey. Uh, Richie Hebner was a pirate, but in the early 70s, not in the early 80s. But you got Lee Lacey, Kasek, who was with the team last year, as I said, Phil Garner and Tim Foley. So we're not going to look like the Pittsburgh Pirates, but let's hope we are good enough to win the division. So you go up here and you look at my history, manager history, and you can see that um, we finished second in our division, 94-68, and, um, and, and we didn't qualify for the playoffs because you have to win your division. And now let's look at the farm system or and the well the teams and the farm system um so here's our 40-man roster right here and this is a lot of the players i just pointed out to you uh mike tyler i don't know, even know who mike tyler is junior ortiz we got i think from another team i don't know if he was a pirate um dave oliver Eugene, Eugenio Coates, Wolford, there's Wolford. I may actually play Wolford a lot. May have to, because I'm not going to play K. I don't want to play Kasich. But if you look here, this is uh, this is AAA right here. You take a look. Uh, we don't have anybody that I even remember. Um, let's see. Bob Beal, for some reason, rings a bell. Doug Froebel. I remember Doug Froebel, but he wasn't good. Um, let's see. Ken Reitz. Ken Reitz. He was a good defensive third baseman. But that may be all he was. So, yeah. And then over here, you've got Double A, the Buffalo Bisons, our Double A club. And... Uh, not a lot of guys that you might remember from there either. Now, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean anything because this is out of the park baseball. Great players in real life could be just mediocre players in out of the park and mediocre players from out of the park could turn into great players. Kasich is an example, that guy Kasich. Um, that dude, let's go look at his um, real life stats. Look here. Here he is. So, this is what he did in 1980 for us. He had uh, 90 plate appearances, 79 at bats, hit 177. Here's his real life stats. Um, real life stats, Major League Baseball. You only see it once, <laughs> and that was in 1977 with Houston. And then he only had 20 at bats, and he hit 050. And that was the only time that he was in the major leagues. So this is see his morale is good. Of course it's good. I'm playing him more than he did in real life. But anyway, so yeah, one quick last look at that rosters and transactions page. So, let's see. Anybody else here? No. No. So, there aren't a lot of guys that were notable from, um, you know, from real life in our minor league system. Because the GM gutted the minor league system to get some of the players we have, like Phil Negro and Willie Wilson and what have you. So... It'll be interesting to see how we do in 1981. And by the way, I'm going to label this. This is, I think, the sixth pirate video. There was five others. I will go back and I will retitle the first five. And I will also title this as episode six. Pirates out of the park, episode six. So that you can keep following along. And if you miss one, you know you missed it if you know, you're watching episode eight, then you know you missed episode seven. 
So I will do that. We will keep putting up games every once in a while uh, and throughout the 81 season with an update on how the Pirates are doing. And again, one last check of the standings and how we uh, finished up there. So, yeah, just barely missed the playoffs. Now I'm going to lose some sleep over that, I'll tell you. But anyway. Missed it by that much. So, yeah, 94 and 68. And it was nice to see the Mets actually fall. And they didn't even really quite fall down to where they were. Remember how the Mets were off to this great start and they were winning the East? And I was like, what? What? Well, it turns out... Um, they ended up 79 and 83. And that's still a lot better than they actually were. So um, anyway, there's a last look at what the teams did, the standings and everything, and um, be interested in your guys' take on everything. I mean, we were, I mean, we went crazy those last two months. So leave me a comment below. Um, let me know if there's particular teams in the National League you want to see me uh, play the Pirates against as we go forward into 1981 and hope that we win the division this time, although the Expos look really tough, and so do even the Phillies. They only finished a game behind us. So other than that, that's what I got for you, and that's it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and I'm signing off.